Hello, and welcome to Fox Pro for DOS. This is going to be a quick overview of how to use DBDOS Pro 4 with Fox Pro for DOS. The first thing you need for Fox Pro for DOS is to download and to install DBDOS Pro 4. This is a simple install and can be done by double clicking on the EXE and walking through the standard Windows installer. This should take less than five minutes to install the actual product. After that, you'll be presented with a screen to register and activate your DBDOS Pro 4. This should take around 30 seconds. You'll have a user key and a password, and it'll go out through the internet and register your DBDOS Pro 4 product with the system. After that, you basically have to create a Fox Pro configuration for DBDOS Pro 4 to use. Once that configuration is created, you can run Fox Pro for DOS simply by double clicking on a shortcut on the Windows desktop. What we're going to talk about today is I'm going to show you how to set up your environment on a Windows 7 64-bit PC and I will create a configuration that will load up Fox Pro for DOS. This should take about five minutes and you should see how easy it will be. So let's get right into it. So what I want to be able to show you today is how to create a simple configuration to set up with Fox Pro 2.6. Now as you can see I have a normal Windows Explorer, File Explorer up and running. I On my C drive inside my DBase directory I have a Fox Pro 2.6a Professional and I have a directory inside of here called FPD26. This is where my Fox Pro is located on this machine. That's an important part of the information to understand about how to set up a configuration. Now that I understand where things are set up, it's very easy to set up a configuration using DBDOS Pro 4. Let's go ahead and proceed. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the configuration wizard for DBDOS Pro 4. I'm going to click on the new configuration and we're going to actually walk through the step-by-step -step configuration in this example. Just realize that we do have an advanced wizard that allows you to go through it in a very quick and orderly fashion if you don't want to do a step-by-step. -step. But I'm going to come in here and say this is Fox Pro 2.6 example. And then I'm going to give it a description of example for Fox Pro. Once I've done that, I'm going to hit the next key. One of the most important parts of setting up a configuration is to mount a drive where your Fox Pro files, data, and applications is located. We know where it's located because we already looked at that location, so I'm going to come in and open up my computer. I know it's on the C drive. I know it's in the DBase directory. I'm going to scroll down to the Fox Pro 2.6 Professional, and I'm going to go to the F. PD26 directory. Notice that there, is, there are a number of directories underneath that and I'm going to go ahead and hit the OK button. Now notice that it comes up and it has a DBDOS C prompt. What that means is that's going to take you to a C colon greater than sign and you can do all of your DOS commands as you would like. You can also click the little house on the line, and as, as you can see, it'll bring up all the executables that it can find in that drive structure, and you can actually pick one for it. So if I come in here and say Fox and hit the OK button, notice that my DBDOS changes over to an EXE because it's automatically running the Fox EXE. If I get rid of it, it goes ahead and puts it back to a command line. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and use the command line. After that, we can go through and set our location. I'm located in the U.S., so these regional settings are fine. My printer settings are also fine. I'm going to use the Enhance, which allows me to do a save to PDF in the future if I so desire. I can hit the next key, and I want to change my rendering to OpenGL for this machine. I have an NVIDIA card on it, and OpenGL is supported. It's going to give me the fastest screen painting, and that will give me the best performance overall. When I'm done with that, I hit next and click on the start menu shortcut and create a desktop shortcut. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. If I wanted to, I could test the configuration to make sure I'm correct, but I know that everything is set up correctly, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit the finish. 
When I click the finish, what it did was it created a new desktop shortcut. Notice in my configuration manager, it has the Fox Pro 2.6 example, and it says example for Fox Pro, and I made a spelling mistake, which is fine. I can go in and change it at any time just by clicking this silver cog and coming in and changing that to Pro. I'm going to go into advanced real quick and just say save so I can get through the process a little bit quicker. Now I'm done with that so I can go ahead and remove that and I'm going to move this up to the top so it's in line with everything else. Double click on it and what this will do is this will kick off the DBDOS virtual machine. As this is loading you'll see that it will kick it off and it will load different things and I'll bring it into here. From here I'm going to type in the word for DOS. We have integration with the for DOS command prompt and command processor which gives us a ton and wealth of commands that you can use. So if I would type help you'll notice that there is a, a, a whole series of topics that you can use with DOS. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to, but it is integrated into the system. It also gives you more advanced features like telling you how much memory you have in your environment, things like that. Now if I do a DIR, you'll notice that all of my things are in here, and if I do a DIR asterisk period, it will basically come up and show me all of the executables on the machine. I want to go ahead and do a Fox EXE. So I'm going to type in the word Fox and hit enter. What this will do is load up Fox Pro for me and we are now ready to go. Now if I wanted to I could come in and we could proceed right to the Fox Pro command line. Notice our system stuff is up here and we have our calculator if we wanted to use that. We have our diary and calendar if we wanted to do that. We can also go ahead and quit out of here and then I can come in and type in Fox Demo and what this will do is kick off the demonstration that is included with the product and you can simply use your mouse and click on the demo and it'll start going through all of those demo pieces for you. Now again, this gives me the full capability to do all kinds of things inside of Fox Pro. And as you noticed, it only took a few seconds for me to actually set things up and get them running. Let me go ahead and go into customer. As you can see, it brings up customer and it allows me to change and modify that data. All of the things that you used to do with that is still supported. If we went into reports, you could actually set up your configuration to go ahead and print to PDF, or you can just print it out to one of your standard printers that's available today with no extra software. We also have, as we said before, we have additional tools and features that allow you to copy information from Windows into your DOS application, and we also have processes to allow you to copy from your DOS applications back into the master operating system which in this case is a Windows 64-bit operating system. So that's really how quick and easy it is for you to load up Fox Pro and get it running on your machine. When you're done you come out you hit exit and then you can just go ahead and click the red X and you're done. If you wanted to come up with another application I'll go into here kick off Harvard graphics and as you can see, if I type in HG here in a second, it'll automatically pop up and we have Harvard Graphics ready to run and ready to go. So with that, I want to thank you for listening, and I hope you'll go out and purchase DBDOS Pro 4 for Fox Pro for DOS. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.